Welcome to Health Sciences 849, Regression Modeling for Public Health. What I want to do in this video is to tell you what we're going to be doing and to give you some insight into why the course is designed in the way that it is. We're going to be focusing on one of the core activities of public health, which is doing research. And specifically, we're going to be focusing on quantitative research methods. Now, one of the special characteristics of this class is that we have students coming into it who have a wide variety of background experience with biostatistics and epidemiology training. So my aim in designing this course was to create something which would be accessible to students who have only a minimal background in biostatistics and epidemiology, but which would also give an opportunity for everyone, regardless of their background experience, to really deepen their practice in research methodologies. Now, one thing you might notice about this course is that I'm taking a somewhat unorthodox approach in how I teach it. Usually the way we teach research methodologies is that we start by teaching the theories of epidemiology and biostatistics kind of in a linear order as if it was coming out of an encyclopedia. And only after working through that canon of theory do people begin to try to apply it in the research setting. But in this course, we're going to jump into conducting research from the very first day without assuming that there is a big background of theoretical training behind you. We're going to pick up and learn theories as their needs arise in the authentic research projects that you're conducting. This kind of course design is motivated by the experience that I had myself learning how to be a quantitative researcher. I've been learning or doing quantitative research full time for more than 15 years now. And I consider my ability to conduct quantitative research as my strongest and most dependable professional skill. And I want to tell you a story about my early period of learning about this, which will illustrate one of the things that I'm trying to aim for in the design of this course. Like some of you in this course, I started out my graduate training in a Master's of Public Health program. And I was very interested in quantitative research methods, and so I used all of my electives to take as many biostatistics and epidemiology courses as I could. In fact, I discovered during my MPH program that I liked research methods so much that I decided to enter into a PhD program after I finished my MPH. So on top of the courses I did for my MPH, I did an additional year of courses for my PhD program in which I increased my biostatistics and epidemiology training even further. And I was very fortunate that once I had finished my coursework, I got an opportunity to move to the Harvard School of Public Health and collaborate with some researchers there on a data set that they had recently finished collecting on air pollution in China. So after all of my training, I finally had a data set in front of me and I was ready to start doing research. But what I was surprised to find was that even after all of that training and all of that work to learn the theory, I was almost completely unprepared to actually conduct research. Luckily, there were people there who were willing to train me and slowly over the next year, I crafted my first data analysis. This gap, between what we learn in epidemiology and biostatistics courses and what it takes to actually work with data is a gap that you hear researchers often talk about. It seems that working with data is something that you can only learn by actually doing it with the guidance of someone who is more advanced in their learning. So this is one of the major goals of this course's design to cross that gap between the theory and actually working with data. And I think our usual way of teaching the theories of research without actually teaching how to do research is unnecessary. To me, the main activity and skill is actually doing research. And the epidemiology and biostatistics theories support that, not the other way around. So we're going to jump into the water on the first day and start swimming. And each of you is going to get an authentic research experience using actual data. Now, one of the questions I faced when designing this course was also to decide whether I should have you working all together on the same project or to have each of you working individually on your own projects. 
Now I have deliberately chosen to have each of you work on your own projects for a specific reason. By seeing each other's projects, you will get a more varied experience of different research elements. I've probably worked on more than 50 different research projects in my career, and I can say that no two so far have been alike. It's my conviction that probably no two research studies is ever quite the same. So in one sense, doing research is about finding solutions to the challenges you face in each of your research processes. And one's ability to do this becomes better and better with more experience doing research. So by having multiple research projects going this semester, we'll be able to multiply your experiences by making transparent all of the research processes that each of you is following. Now there is an additional design challenge for a course like this. Which theories should we cover during the semester? There's a core set of theories that are necessary in every research endeavor. But beyond that, it really depends upon the particular project because each project is unique. So another unorthodox aspect about this course design is that although we're going to be covering a core set of theories, beyond that, the scope of the class is going to emerge from the particular research projects that you decide to undertake. We will cover the theoretical needs of your authentic research projects using real data. Now the goal here cannot be to cover all of the theory in one semester that is necessary to conduct quantitative research. If you want to become an expert researcher, then you're going to need to embed yourself in one or more research communities and begin practicing for years. And this practice of continual development doesn't ever stop. I've been doing this for over 15 years and I'm continuing to learn today. Now, some of you might not plan to become researchers. Some of you might plan to be public health practitioners. And for you, I want to point out the important skills that I think this course will offer you. Sometimes people think that doing quantitative research is an isolated activity, but in fact, it's done in communities of research practice. Usually on a research project, you have a number of people working together as a team. Now, there are different ways to set up a research team, but this is a model that I've often seen. One person is the project lead, and they're also responsible for designing and conducting the data analysis. I sometimes refer to this person as the modeler. That's because they're developing the statistical model. Another role is the epidemiologist. Usually this is a person with a PhD in epidemiology and their responsibility are all of the theories related to epidemiology. Another person on the team is often a biostatistician and this is also usually a person who has a PhD in biostatistics. And their responsibility is all of the theory surrounding biostatistics. And in many cases, they are researchers themselves conducting biostatistics research. So they will be working with the team to develop new biostatistical methods to address the particular new problems that come up in the research endeavor. Whereas in epidemiology uses statistics to conduct research, the statistician takes biostatistics as the research object itself. And finally, and this is the important role for those of you who may not plan to become researchers. There often are one or more content area experts who take part in the research team. They might, for example, be a physician who knows about the particular disease under study, or maybe they're a member of the community where the research has taken place who is helping to design the questions that will be addressed in the research, or maybe this is a public health practitioner who is responsible for a particular public health intervention that is being evaluated through research. Each of you is going to be taking on the role of project leader slash modeler for your individual research project. Now in an academic setting, this role is often filled by an MSc or PhD student or by a postdoctoral researcher. But even if you are never planning on pursuing this path of a research career, you might be called on to be a content area expert on a research team in a public health practice setting. 
And I think that by having this experience of seeing a research project from the point of view of a project leader modeler, even at this foundational level, you will be more prepared to work more effectively on a research project in the future if you're called upon to be a content area expert. And if you're planning a research career, this course will prepare you at a foundational level to take part in a community of practice where you can gain more experience and develop your skills as a researcher. And that's the goal of this course. This course aims to develop technical and cognitive skills at a foundational level that will be applicable to participation in collaborative epidemiological research teams as a research methodologist or content area expert. So hopefully this will give you some insight into the course design and I'm really looking forward to a great semester.